continued is crucial. Experts are not going to tell people what to do, but will exchange, network, exchange experiences, because what happens in one area in the world may be completely different of what is happening in another area. So the solutions to problems may be different. So this is the right place where we come together and exchange, network, and uh, um, um, see how different solutions can be applied in different areas of work. The seminar is expected to focus on the prevention of work-related accidents, including high-risk sectors such as agriculture, construction, and mining. It will also discuss occupational diseases in African countries, improve social protection performance in Africa, and mainstream social security activities in the informal sector to minimize workplace accidents. For GRTS News, I am Fatou Yassi. Shortly after presiding over that press conference, delegates began a two-day seminar which focuses on work accidents and occupational diseases in Africa. Louis Mendy attended the opening ceremony and reports the technical tutorial is expected to provide a situation analysis of high-risk industries in Africa, good practices and solutions to reducing hazard exposure. Technical specialists from various social security institutions, both home and abroad, converge to dialogue and learn best practices to ensure the prevention of industrial accidents and diseases. The two-day tutorial caps on work accident and occupational diseases in Africa has its objective premise on the need to build a preventive-based high-performing accident insurance system to protect the dignity and lives of workers. The seminar is also expected to look into challenges and training needs for the social security institutions to enable them to take the right actions at all times. This session will also look at the different categories of occupational diseases, the legal requirements, preventive strategies. Yes, preventive strategies. This is a very important point. Because it will not only reduce the cost of curing, but it can prevent untimely death. Experts at this convergence reveal that traditional viewants on occupational risk have changed, and as a result, many companies today focus their efforts on the development of a working environment which benefits not only the companies but workers as well. But despite the development, over 2 million people die each year of work-related accidents and occupational diseases as estimated by the International Labor Organization, a scenario that triggers the debate, what can social security contribute to this challenge? At the ESA, we strongly believe that all social security institutions should engage in risk prevention. Let me give you a few reasons why. First, by tackling risk factors through prevention, Social Security can offer a contribution to the individual and to society. This goes beyond the scope of paying out benefits. Compensation and rehabilitation are integral parts of Social Security. But prevention has always played a key role. Mr. Ben reiterated that is the reason why Technical Commission of ESA is developing guidelines for social security organizations to assist them improve the prevention, performance, and addressing workplace health performance of the challenges of return to work, as well as integration. The guidelines will suggest how accident insurances and workers' compensation roles can set up prevention services and gather evidence to build a strong case for prevention. Secondly, we conducted a study on the return on prevention and an international study has found out that there is a potential return for every dollar that a company can invest into prevention measures at the workplace and that return can be 2.2 which means to say that for every dollar that you invest you will have a potential return of 2.2 Mr. Brewer, the chairperson of the ESA Technical Commission on Insurance Against Employment Accidents and Occupational Diseases, is one of the tutors for the seminar. His deliberation centers on the subject preventing, reporting, and managing occupational diseases. 
Mr. Brewer said two reasons motivated him to choose the topics. One is the big picture and growing relevance of occupational diseases. The second reason has more to do with the exchange of experiences, a topic he emphasized is so dear to the ESA Technical Commission. This question is the reason why I'm a big supporter of the insurance solution for occupational disease. Insurance does not only guarantee that the victims of occupational disease will be compensated, even though their former employer may have gone out of business years ago. Insurance systems ensure that all occupational diseases will be treated and compensated according to the same criteria. It is hoped that this seminar will help with our good employees, employees as well as other stakeholders to create the required awareness of the important skill. The report suggested that many cases of work accidents and occupational diseases are unreported as a result of lack of awareness. This seminar hopefully will address this problem. This activity by the Social Security in collaboration with ESA is in fulfillment of one of its broad mandates, building a safety net for society to protect the life and dignity of every human being. It is therefore envisaged that the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation at the end of this seminar will join a list of institutions and government that sign the Seawall Declaration. Its goal is to build a preventive culture with the potential to protect the life and dignity of every human being as safety and health is recognized as a fundamental human right. Louis Mendy, GRTS. Residents of Majai Central recently organized a mega Islamic conference that focused on the importance of mosques in Islamic societies and the benefits of spending on religious institutions. The convergence, as Abu Bakar Dabo tells us, attracted the participation of Muslim scholars from far and near. time religious leaders in Manjai Central join hands with partners depending in the curse of Allah. Join scholars from far and near. The religious convergence delves into the role of mosque during the infant stages of Islam and the significance of contributing towards their building and upkeep in Islamic societies. The conference came at a time when the community itself faces the Hakulian challenge of finishing its own mosque which has been in this state for many years now. The Alcala of Manjai Muhammad Salih Gomez in his welcoming remarks described the gathering as a blessing not only for Manjai but the country as a whole, calling on the guests to make best use of the opportunity. He hailed government for creating the enabling environment for Muslims to practice their religion without facing any difficulty. Imam Mustafa Jal of Said House Mosque, one of the guest speakers at the ceremony, explained that Islam as a civilization places high premium on its mosques not only as a place of worship but a center where religious services are rendered. Mosques, he continued, serve as schools, courts, and parliaments for Muslim societies, thus making them the single most relevant institution in Islamic history. Imam Jalo concluded by seeking for assistance to complete the mosque, reporting the narration of the Holy Prophet that whoever builds a house for Allah in the world will be rewarded a home in paradise. The Imam Radib of Kotukwari, Usaz al Haji Omar Dabo, another guest speaker, stated that gardens of such nature are among the noblest gardens in the sight of Allah. He buttressed on the narration of the Prophet that spending even a penny towards Islamic projects attracts the reward of a home in paradise. He called on the faithful to strictly adhere to the principles of Islam at all times and always abide by the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Ustaz Abu Bakr Mbai also re echoed similar statements, adding that it is our duty as Muslims to support Islam any way we could. At the end of the conference, Imam Ahmed Bushiri Fadera of Manjai thanked the delegates for gracing the occasion, pointing out that the knowledge learned will go a long way in helping Muslims understand their duties towards their religion. The Manjai Imam pleaded with the head of state and his government to help complete the mosque which currently stands as the biggest mosque in the whole of Manjai. Abu Bakr Dabo, 
GRTS. The School of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences are the winners.